everyone in Philadelphia and everyone who visits Philadelphia wants their picture with Rocky. You couldn't ask for a more enthusiastic civic booster than Ed Rendell. He was the mayor of this city and then the governor of the state. Oh, it's my pleasure. Rendell brought us to one of Philadelphia's major tourist draws, the Rocky statue at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Wonderful. Here goes a guy with no socks prancing up. Do the steps help keep Philadelphians slim and trim? No, <laughs> because it's mostly people from out of town who run the steps. And from the top of those steps, you can look over George Washington's shoulder to where the country was born. The revolution was a revolution of ideas. Mm -hmm. Those ideas were formulated and debated here. Visitors swarmed the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall, where both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were signed. Pennsylvania was the biggest delegation. You can see there are seven of them. And at the National Constitution Center, they get up close and personal with the founding fathers. Ben Franklin is extremely popular. He used to have the famous Franklin glasses on, but the tourists kept touching the Franklin glasses so much. They broke the glasses. We tried, I think, three pair and finally gave up. You just gave him LASIK. But look, that's how often he gets touched compared to the other statue. It seems that everywhere you turn in Philadelphia, history is just around the corner. This is Elfort's Alley. It's the oldest continually inhabited street in America. And it's just one of Philadelphia's many distinctions. This city also has the country's first hospital, its first library, its first stock exchange, and its first art museum. There are plenty of places we could go for a cheesesteak. Oh yeah, and you can't, it's hard to get a bad cheesesteak in Philadelphia. I live in this neighborhood and this is my favorite. History, not to mention geography, has not always been kind to Philadelphia, which was the nation's capital from 1790 until 1800. I chewed the fat with Governor Rendell, who was actually born in New York City. You're a transplant, so what do you think you notice about Philadelphia that Philadelphians may not notice about themselves? The city has a little bit of an inferiority complex. In colonial times, we were the most sophisticated, most important city in the country. Right. But now we're 100 miles south of the financial capital of the world and 150 miles north of the political capital of the world. Right. So it makes Philadelphians a little defensive and, and to sort of feel a little inferior. So we associate all the founding fathers with Philadelphia, but... Most of them are from Philadelphia. Joe Queenan is an essayist and somewhat curmudgeonly native son. There's the Philly that's the cradle of American democracy, and then there's the Philly that has what Ed Rendell called an inferiority complex. I wouldn't so much call it as an inferiority complex as it has a chip on its shoulder. About what? The rest of the world. The rest of the world has a long history of laughing at the city. W.C. Fields reputedly said, I once spent a year in Philadelphia. I think it was on a Sunday. Yes, I'd like to see Paris before I die. Philadelphia will do. And then there are the long-suffering fans of the city's football team, the Eagles. The last time the Eagles won the championship was right here in this field. In 1960. Yeah. 1960. Okay. Last year, Eagles fans were named by Sports Illustrated as the most hated in the NFL. After all, they're the ones who, on a truly legendary day at Franklin Field, launched a snowball attack against Santa Claus. Governor, you were here that day in 1968. What happened? The Santa that the Eagles had hired got sick, so they had to look for a substitute Santa, and they went into the stands and saw this guy in a Santa suit. They asked him to do it. He wasn't a great Santa, and then they poured this poor substitute Santa out of him, and they pelted him. I think he got barely halfway around before he said no mas. Joe, why do you think this story is so well known? Because people like any story that trashes Philadelphia. <laughs> and most people in Philadelphia would just say that Santa deserved it. Clearly, Philadelphia has its standards. The key to the cheesesteak is cheese whiz, because you want the cheese to get into the nooks and crannies of the steak. Which brings us back to the cheesesteak and an epic misstep by John Kerry when he ran for president. John Kerry came in in order to cheesesteak with Swiss cheese. Unheard of. He would have been better skipping the cheesesteak entirely. There's a right way to eat it, too. I should point out that you are eating a cheesesteak wearing a very nice suit. It can be done, but you have to lean forward at all times. It's actually called a Philadelphia lean. Is it like a slouch, or is it a from no, the no, hips? No, you or... lean from the hips, you lean forward. Very important. 
It's actually kind of, it's probably good for your digestion a little bit too, right? Or, I don't know about that. Ed Rendell is not just an etiquette expert. As the chairman of the Democratic Convention's host committee, he's working to reclaim Philadelphia's glory. I came up with the slogan, let's make history again, alluding to the fact that history was made. The first convention in the United States was the Continental Congress. And I was alluding to the fact that we would probably nominate first woman candidate to be president. Let's make history again. And if it were Bernie, it would be the first Jewish president. No, actually, I was thinking of the first socialist president. <laughs> Philadelphia is actually the Greek word for brotherly love, hence the traditional slogan, City of Brotherly Love. It was named in 1681 by its founder, William Penn, who still presides from atop City Hall. 335 years later, Philadelphia is still defining itself. I saw a sign, and it was an advertisement for Philadelphia, and it said, with love, from Philadelphia. That is so un-Philadelphia. They used to have a campaign, Philadelphia, the, the city, city that, that loves, loves you, back. you back. It's just not a lovable place. It's not a place that's warm. It's a place that, like, take it or leave it. And in fact, we would prefer that you leave it.